The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. The university, undoubtedly the one place where the free exchange of ideas meets with intellectual vigor and civility. You were disgusting. Slap your racist mama! The university is ours. Expect resistance to anyone who opposes us. Best-selling author and radio talk show host Dennis Prager explains how free speech is under attack in America, next on Life Today. on life today, and they love to tell. Uh, I'm James Robinson, Betty, and I welcome you. I'm, I'm as excited about this guest as any we've ever had and ever will have, and that's not in any way belittling those we've had, because we've had as good as you can get. This guy's just a special gift. Uh, Dennis Prager is, uh, he's a Jew. Uh, I'm a Christian, and we love each other, and uh, our Savior, our Lord, came uh, from uh, the Jewish family. Uh, I was talking to uh, Robbie Zacharias, uh, and he loves Dennis. They do stuff together, and we love Robbie. I want you to welcome Dennis Prager, and I'll finish the Robbie story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that Robbie said, it, Robbie said he enjoys you as much as anyone he's ever been around. Really, and I know I feel like you well, really respect him and appreciate him totally. Uh, and uh, you've really blessed people to come. Anyway, he said he, you made an interesting statement. He said uh, somebody said when you know when you, you know what do you think about, you know what we as Christians? He said, well, when I see the Messiah, he did said, I'm going to ask him, have you been here before? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that sounds like Dennis Prager. It does sound like Dennis Prager. Yeah, <laughs> I want us to talk about this. By the movie. way, I, I love you folks, and but there's something to me even more important because theoretically, one obviously loves people of any faith and atheists. Sure. But it's not just that we love each other. I think m more important, we we're fighting the same fight. That, that's the point, and that, that really is for me the point. Uh, I don't know if you have to love your buddies in the platoon when you're fighting the enemy, I, but you have to be aware that you are fighting the same enemy. You have to believe you're fighting for the right purpose. And you're fighting for the right purpose. Because you're giving your life for it. That's correct. That's exactly you're right. Risky. You said something to us at dinner that because I'm, I want to be optimistic. I believe we've had great spiritual awakenings. I believe this nation was born out of a pursuit of God and a respect for the exodus of the Jewish people and the freedom. You know that. It birthed the greatest nation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I think it, it's as great an event as has ever happened in human history with any government or any nation's birth. And it's great. But, but we also know that, that uh, today the war is against the truth and the, the freedom that truth offers and that's what I see you standing up uh, against the, the enemy that is attacking the truth and, and attacking freedom. So we, we are, you said something at dinner about, because I said I'm fighting for the next awakening, you know, and, 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 I, and you, you, you said something very profound. You said you didn't have to be an optimist and you didn't have to be optimistic. I, I'd love you to share that thought because I thought it well, was I'm asked transformative. All, I'm, I'm asked all the time, am I optimistic? And I, I said to you, and those who've heard me know that this is true, because I'm, by the way, one advantage about not lying is you never have to remember what you said. It, it's unbelievably relaxing. Uh, I, 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 it's, one, it's a great benefit of truth telling. But anyway, uh, so I'm asked a lot, are, am I optimistic? But I, I, I don't ever fool my audience. I, I have too much respect for them and Anyway, I can't say what I don't believe. I'm, it's almost, I'm, I'm really incapacitated in that way. So, uh, and the truth is the last election, uh, I was pessimistic. I was not just not optimistic, I was pessimistic. 
And uh, by the way, it turned out for me such a happy night uh, <laughs> that I have told my two sons, and this will definitely lower me in your esteem. I have no <laughs> doubt about this, but I will tell you anyway. I said, you know, boys, uh, the nights, they were both born at night. The nights you were born were extraordinarily happy nights in my life. But the night Trump won was happier. <laughs> It, it wasn't because you were just enthralled with the man. You no, saw I, I what was, he was, I was standing against. I was against. opposed to, to uh, during the primaries. Uh, he was my last choice. Yep. I, 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 it's, Mine too. It's, it's on the internet. My, I, I broadcast it. But I said, if he wins the nomination, I will vote for him. I had no choice. The, the, the left is, is ruining the West, not just America. I have no choice. I cannot allow the left to win. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the night he won, by the way, I... I I will even go, I will diminish even further in your esteem, because <laughs> uh, that night was, not only was it so happy for me, but I engaged in something I never engage in, schadenfreude, joy at others' misery. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I did not watch Fox News for one minute that night. I only watched MSNBC <laughs> and CNN, which, Added to my joy, uh, uh, immeasurably. Do you think they're left? <laughs> yes, I think they're left. Yes. They not only are left, they left. <laughs> they, they, well, the left did leave. I mean, that, that, it's it, anyway. So on the optimism issue, I, I I never ask myself. I don't I don't think whether I'm optimistic. First of all, I've written a book on happiness. I care about happiness tremendously. So optimism has two definitions. If you look it up, and they're both accurate. One is you think things will turn out well. The other is you see the best in any situation. I'm an optimist in the number two. Whatever the situation, I, I, I really do try to see the best in it. But I, I, the idea that things will turn out well is just not true so often. I can't fool myself into believing that. We can lose freedom. That's a fact because freedom is a value. Uh, and uh, almost half of millennials don't believe in free speech for hate speech, which means they don't believe in free speech. It shows you how poorly they think that they can even say, of course I believe in free speech, but not for hate speech. It means I believe in free speech for what I agree with. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's moronic. So who doesn't? The, the, every communist regime believed, believed in free speech for speech they agreed with too. Every, every the, uh, Hitler agreed with that too. You could say anything that they agreed with. But if you that, didn't, it but wasn't if you safe. Didn't, yes, exactly. So it, 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 it's an absurdity. I believe in free speech except for hate speech. It's an absurdity. <laughs> you either believe in free speech or you don't believe in free speech. And they don't. Freedom is a value. I, I, I repeat this almost every day. It is not an instinct. The human instinct is to be taken care of. It is not freedom. And again, Good old Bible, and, and, and I make this point in my, in my rational Bible, my commentary on the first five books, and in Exodus, I point out the genius of the, of the biblical narrative. God takes the Jews, the Israelites, the Hebrews, whichever term you wish to use, out of Egypt. What is the first thing they do? Complain. <laughs> Correct? Yep. And, and what do they complain? It was better in Egypt because oh, yeah. we ate meat. Mm. They preferred to be slaves eating well than free eating manna. Mm. This is all there. Nothing is new. No. I have this, I actually feel bad for God. It's like God <laughs> experiences Groundhog Day every generation. <laughs> I know, I, I think about it, I can't believe it again. They're doing the same thing again. <laughs> Uh, uh, if he turned his attention to another galaxy, I could totally understand it. I, 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 we are boring him out of, out of his mind. Well, well, you, with, you, well, excuse me. With freedom comes responsibility. Oh, exactly. Also, it's not with free, everything's exactly. given to That's us. right. And what's, by the way, and what's it. on the Liberty Bell? See, the Christians who founded America were, were different than Europe's Christians. There were some great Christians in Europe, of course. But the Christians that founded America were, I think, the greatest Christians as a group that ever lived. And I, and I, I am so grateful to the Christians who founded America. And what do they put 
on the Liberty Bell. One verse. And where is it from? The Torah. Almost, almost no Jew knows this. Almost no Christian knows this. There's only one thing on the Liberty Bell, and it's from Leviticus. By the way, anyone who knows Leviticus knows his Bible. <laughs> I mean, you know... <laughs> This is my worry. The first two volumes of my, of my Rational Bible series on the first five books, was, I'm very grateful, was actually sold at Costco. I mean, you know, in the middle of God knows what, is the Rational Bible, it's hard to believe. I can't believe that I got into Costco. But the real test is not Exodus and Genesis. It's Leviticus. Tell us what's on the Liberty Bell. When, if, I, uh, on the Liberty Bell? Yeah. yeah. And, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land through all its inhabitants. <laughs> so am I, I will okay say this right now. if I keep now, doing that, then it's because I'm doing that. I'm proclaiming liberty. You certainly available. are. Yeah, I'm, and I'm fighting for it. That's it, correct. To me, that's not necessarily having to have no. an optimistic spirit. But I believe it's possible that we could keep some freedom for a while. No, that's what you and I are fighting for. I'm, that's I'm that's why I'm you. here. That's why I adore you. And that's in your work. <laughs> that's right. We're in the same battle. But anyway, I just want to say, if, if Costco sells my Leviticus, <laughs> then the Messiah is returning or coming. Whichever one. For us coming, for you returning, but it is definitely the Messianic age if, if Costco sells a commentary on Leviticus. That, that is clear to me. And they teach it at Berkeley. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's, you're asking for too much. All right. I want to show a trainer. This, this yes, is those going safe in spaces. the theaters, and you need to get everybody to go. They do. I you mean, do. You, you people do have to go. Way. Here's the thing. There's his address. Support what he's doing. I want you to see the trailer on this movie, on this documentary. Watch it closely. It's an honor to speak in front of you all. Do we get to keep these pads? <laughs> America was built on ideas. You should be able to share without fear of being fired from your job or shouted down. Fundamental American right is to say what's on your mind. This new politically correct tyranny, it's creating an atmosphere of fear and repression. Whoever told you, you only had to hear what didn't upset you. It's gonna bust. There will be resistance and it will not be peaceful. If you have any spark of individualism, they will come to destroy you. The soul of America. When's the movie coming out again? <laughs> Dennis, what, what is your hope? Because you've put a lot into the movie, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. What's your hope? The, the hope is that it will awaken Americans. The vast majority of Americans do not know the closing down of the mind taking place at the university, the closing down of speech. And that's why you saw Bill Maher and people on the left. I mean, we, we want this, we want, there's not much we can unite with Bill Maher on. But if we could unite for free speech, that's enough. Then, we, then at least we have a place to differ. Right now at the university, there's no place to differ. You know what safe, No Safe Spaces is about? I mean, why we got the title? Universities, this is frightening. If you don't like a speaker coming in, you can retreat to a safe space. They actually have places called safe spaces. What happens? The conservative, it's always a conservative, the conservative speaker is speaking. You go to the safe space. They give you hot chocolate. <laughs> I, I give you my, I'm not making this up, Play-Doh. <laughs> You get to watch uh, videos of puppies frolicking, and and they give you um, uh, chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Safe base. This these these are twenty year old human beings. I mean, when when I was five, I could have handled this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the, one of the things the left is doing is it infantilizes people, yeah. and that that's terribly damaging to the society as well as to the individual. That's where we got no safe spaces. Life doesn't have safe spaces. Well, I guess, I mean, to a certain extent it does. That's why we have churches and synagogues. These was, that They were meant to be safe spaces. You know, life is difficult. Come each week with, in fellowship with God and, and your, and your co-religionist, but they don't have that. 
See, the religious kids on campuses don't need a safe space. Yeah. They got one. What do you want the film to do? What's, I what's want it to hope? wake up America, and I want it. I want people to actually personally. I'm, this is not the official line of the movie makers. Mm -hmm. I would like a lot of parents to think, do I really want to send my kid to college right after high school? I think most kids should take a year or two off. The more mature you are before you go to college, the less likely you are to be indoctrinated. Do you, when you see these kids with their hatred, screaming epithets at, at speakers, you know, you know, Heather McDonald is a, is a woman and you know, she goes there and she, she speaks and, and they start screaming at her, fascist, uh, I, I, it's, it's it, it's so this was unpredictable because as I said the one thing Americans united on was I'll fight for your right to say whatever you say when I was a kid I remember so we play stickball on the streets in Brooklyn I don't know if stickball was ever a thing in, in, in Texas but uh, in, in we would play stickball and some kid would uh, would say something really stupid and then another kid would say what the you know what's wrong with you and uh, and he goes hey it's a free country I remember hearing that <laughs> yeah. so often. That's the right. kid who said the stupidest thing would go, oh, it's a free country, and that would shut us up. He's right, it's a free country. You could say moronic things. <laughs> but no kid today goes, hey, it's a free country. That's really sad. That's not in the vocabulary of kids today. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, James and I had the privilege of watching your movie, documentary, and when we came to the end of it, I, I have to say the first thought I had was, God, I pray that people will have ears to hear because this is truth. Yes. And they need to hear it. We're not being taught the truth. Kids are not growing up teaching the truth. And I believe that that starts with the breakdown of the home. We've just kind of turned our children out to pasture. And we're not spending time with them before they go out into the world. We're not giving them the foundations they need, the truths that they need. Well, you know, I agree with you, but... It's even worse than that. They don't know how. That's right. Noah. Americans forgot how to teach what America's about. Christians forgot how to teach what Christianity's about. And Jews forgot how to teach what Judaism is about. So the only people teaching them what anything is about is their leftist instructor. Now, in, 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 in elementary school, kids in, in, a, in American elementary schools in many classes are no longer called boys and girls. Did you know that? No, no. They're not allowed to be divided by sex. Yeah. I, 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 this is, this is a, a, a sea change. Dennis, it's the reason that you spend so much time going through the Word of God that Genesis and Exodus, to start with, these are absolutely fabulous commentaries written with someone who not only is uh, Jewish but has the understanding of the Hebrew language, <clears throat> have a genuine respect for what God has done as creator. You and I didn't wonder for one second when we were in the room together that we loved each other. And we loved Well, as I, I, as I said, that's, that's easier than being allies in a struggle. Because it says love your neighbors yourself, and that's independent of whether you're fighting together and so on. We're better than just love each other. We, We're we, allies. We love the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. We love God. We love the truth. We actually think that the biblical worldview is the most sophisticated moral achievement in human history. It is. That, we believe that. And, and my task is to explain why. So, for example, just, I, I mean, as I say to pastors, get this book. If you don't get 100 sermons, I'll buy it back from you. Okay? <laughs> That's my deal with, with all and clergy. I agree with you. No, no, I mean no, it you're right. seriously. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll give you an example, okay? And I, this is in my forward. I had troubles with my parents when I was 19. Shocking, right? It's unheard of. So, <laughs> I, I, but here's the key uh, from the day I left my parents' home at 21, until the day they died, 96 and 89 respectively, or 89, 96 respectively, I called my parents every single week of their life. No matter how difficult I was feeling psychologically or emotionally toward them. And there was only one reason. I truly believed God had commanded me, honor your father and mother. And it didn't come with an asterisk if you're getting along well with them. <laughs> That's right. That's life-changing stuff. Yes, it is. 
We're going to go into more of what you talk about in the in the commentaries because we're going to talk about the importance of the Ten Commandments, the Word of God, in the next program. Do you appreciate Dennis Prager? Do you appreciate the fact that he's here sharing? Remember, the book is out, but go to the movie. Get people to go to it. Uh, support what Dennis is doing. And we're going to talk about the Genesis and Exodus commentary. Dennis, we, we do our best to rescue people who are in total bondage, people who are being trafficked sexually. I want you to watch one of our friends, Sheila Walsh, demonstrate the love of God that uh, Betty and I and Dennis and everybody in this studio, and I want to believe everybody watching, believes is to be shared freely. Watch closely. Who's your, who's your best friend? She said, no, nobody. Do you have anyone that you trust? No. Some of these are like 14, 15 year old girls and they wake up beside some 50, 60 year old man and they're held for weeks and months. Do you remember that first night? Do you remember what that felt like? You and I, as God's sons and daughters, we've got to be the ones telling these girls, you have a future and you have a purpose and you have a hope and there is a God who loves you. And there are people on this planet who know this God and want to share this love with you. You are not worthless. You are not worth ten dollars every time a man comes through the door if we don't help nobody's going to help betty when you see that just tell me what you want our viewers to to think and and how you pray they respond i hope you will dig deep down in your heart and say, God, what can I do to help these precious little ones? And they are little ones. They're being taken horrible advantage of. They're being beaten. They ring drug. They're being just treated so badly if they don't obey what they tell them to do. And they don't know if they'll ever get out of there. But they're little children crying out in their hearts, somebody, please hear my cry. I need some help. Please, won't you join with us and let's reach out and be that hope that they're looking for. I'm praying that this last week now when we have this particular rescue life emphasis that you'll help us. We need to hear from every one of you. We need a miracle. We have a miracle that started this particular emphasis. When some of our friends said, we'll put up a challenge gift of $320,000 to match what people give which means your gift can be doubled. The average amount it takes to start the rescue process is $128 to reach one. But now it'll be two if you can make that gift. I always challenge people to see if you could rescue as many as possible. As an example, you rescue 10 with a gift of $1,280, but now you'll be rescuing 20 because it's doubled. Would you right now get your bank card, use it like a check, if you use a check, make it to life. That's what you're giving. But please go online or dial that number that's there as a prayer line and now a rescue line, a lifeline, and make the gift God put on your heart. We have some gifts to send you to say thank you. But you're giving these precious girls and boys the greatest gift. You're giving them life and freedom. Thank you so much for doing it. Thank you for your love and your gift. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. 
With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue a child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. And with your donation of any amount, we'll send you the Faith, Hope, Love tea towel set. These beautifully woven hand towels are a wonderful reminder to remain steadfast in faith, hope, and love each day. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the life-giving Proverbs Journal. Bound in genuine leather, this journal is filled with wisdom and daily encouragement from Proverbs, featuring lined pages for your personal notes as you reflect on godly instruction to success in life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request our beautiful bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. You know, I do want to remind you, this is the last week now for Rescue Life. We really need to hear from you, all of you. Uh, Dennis Prager is going to be back. Now, remember the movie, No Safe Spaces. Get everybody you know to go. And just just remember, freedom can be lost. Yeah. And all of us ought to stand and fight for what's right. And freedom is right. God gave freedom to his people. Jesus gave freedom to us. For freedom, Christ set us free, Galatians 5.1. Tomorrow we're going to talk about these commentaries. Dennis Prager is going to be back with us in the next program. I think we may have a program with Sheila. But I'm just telling you, I really appreciate you. And I really, and Betty, we really appreciate this guy. Would you join Betty and me saying thanks to Dennis Prager? You'll be back with us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for helping. Peace is not the absence of trouble. It's the presence of Christ. Sheila Walsh, tomorrow on Life Today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.